Hey, and welcome to this tutorial, the third in this three part series taking you through the modeling, unwrapping and texturing of this asset. Today we will take the asset we just unwrapped, export it and texture it within Substance Painter. If you haven't already and you're following along, why not share your progress on the Discord server and check out my Patreon to gain access to the Maya files and reference images I used for this project. In Maya we can both smooth preview and we can subdivide at render time which is great. In Substance Painter what you see is what you get. So if we import this relatively low poly version of this asset, that's what's going to be baked into all the maps we generate. We don't want this, so before we export let's pre-subdivide the mesh so we can work with and bake our high resolution topology. Make a duplicate of our mesh, just rename HP for high poly or whatever you want. For the time being, we can just hide the original object as well. Let's just smooth this one more time for a total of two divisions across the mesh since we smoothed in the last video as well. In the smooth settings, just make sure you have UV boundary smoothing set to none. This just ensures the UV shells don't change since ultimately we will be setting up the shader on the original mesh, the one that we can smooth preview and subdivide at render time, but is light in the viewport. And we need the two sets of UVs to be identical. I'll just show you the difference quickly. Just open up the UV editor. When we have it set to none, you can see our shell edges don't change. But with preserve edges, for example, notice how it all just kind of smooths out. This would be an issue because our textures wouldn't line up 100% since the border of our shells are changing. Cool, so selecting the asset, head up to export selection and I will just export a FBX giving it a name and just exporting. Now in substance we can go to file, new, switch the template to ASM which I think stands for Adobe Substance Material and we just want the PBR metallic roughness. There are others to choose from, but for this example, the default would do just fine. Navigate to wherever you exported the file and just select it. Change the output size to whichever is appropriate for you. Here, I would just set mine to 4K. Now I use V-Ray and I know it's OpenGL, but if you're not sure, there's a nice website that has a table of programs and each of their normal map formats. I've linked it in the description if you want to check it out. Head into the texture set settings and just scroll down to bake mesh maps. Set the output size to whatever you like. I recommend at least the resolution you want to export the final textures. Check on use low poly as high poly since we're not baking detail onto the low poly version and we're working on the high poly asset itself. In this example, we can check off normal and ID since we don't need to bake those. Leaving everything else at default, we can go ahead and hit bake dark. It's called dark because that's the name of my dark fong material inside of Maya. So don't worry if yours is named differently. It's at this point, if we had also saved the low poly version of this asset, we could go to edit, project configuration and switch out for that low poly version. And this would allow us to have a bit more interaction in the viewport. But here we don't really need to do that since we have such a simple asset. Cool, so now that's covered. For the sake of this tutorial, we will just work with some smart materials. And using some masks, we will layer some of the other layers on top to achieve the results we desire. For the handle, let's just give it plastic glossy scuffed. It has a nice used quality to it. But it might be a little on the dark side of things. So if we go ahead and open up the folder, and just with the plastic layer selected, we can get to the settings down here, but I prefer to get to it quickly just by right clicking out here in the viewport. So we can just go ahead and make some adjustments. For the blade, let's go ahead and add steel. And we can just go ahead and increase the base color. Just bringing up the brightness just a little. I think we can probably get away with decreasing the roughness details a little bit. We can switch the drop down here to roughness. Now we can control the opacity of the roughness layer. So we can use that to get a more subtle effect. Cool, so right now we have metal on the whole knife and the plastic is covering the whole knife also. This isn't what we desire. So what we can do is just put the plastic layer on top, right click the folder and add a black mask. So now we can mask exactly where we want this layer to be shown. Holding shift and as we rotate, 
which by the way you can do using the same controls as Maya. Doing that we can just snap into the side view and if we go ahead and hit F6 that's going to put us into the author graphic view. Pressing 4 on the keyboard and with the face select mode toggled on over here and just ensuring the color is set to white we can then start to add the details to the handle. Unfortunately for us our topology isn't super straight along this edge but what we can do is add this detail on the top of the handle where we do have some nice and straight topology just trying to get an idea for how thick this should be. No I guess I want this to be a little bit thinner. And now we can go ahead and select as much of the handle as possible. Just to let one more face loop at the end. So now with the brush tool active, right click out here in the viewport to get to the settings. And we will just want to remove the alpha so that we basically just have a square brush. Next, making the brush relatively small, which you can do with control and the right mouse button and just moving the mouse left to right until you have a good size like this. We then want to make this edge straight since now it's kind of curvy. With the brush tool what we can do is click once which is like the starting point and then when you hold shift you can see it's going to draw this like straight line from that point. Then if you hold control as well it'll snap the line so you can get the perfect straight angle. Cool so work your way around like so and if you find it doesn't draw the line the whole way what you can do is just keep holding shift and control and just do multiple passes with the brush. Rotate around the mesh using shift to snap. Just line up the brush so we can paint our straight edge. Just rinse and repeat around the whole handle. Cool, so I will just go ahead and paint the spot that got left out. And that is now done and dusted. Now we have the bottom edge nice and straight, we can work our way around again to add this painted line. I do just want this brush to be a similar size to the other line here, and we can just start drawing out the line. Of course, please take more care than me, I'm trying to work fast to kind of keep the tutorial flowing. Just keep working your way around, And hopefully you get something which aligns well by the time you get to the other side. And if not, you can always redo until you get it right. Hit F5 to go back into perspective mode. So we can see the knife just a little bit better. So we could keep going and get more and more advanced. But something quick and easy I like to do is just to add a layer of dirt on top. Which is nice as it just sort of gives a little bit more depth to the textures. A nice and easy way to do this is to add a fill layer. Make it a dark colour. And I might just sort of make it a little bit of a dirty colour too. And just increase the roughness a lot. We can go ahead and turn off the height and normal map since we don't need to affect those. Right click the layer and give it a black mask. Right click the black mask and add a generator. Then click the generator and select dirt. This will use the curvature and ambient occlusion maps for example and gives us dirt in the hard to reach areas of the asset. Play around with the parameters to get the look just how you want it to be. Explore and see what each thing does. I really kind of think that's the best way to learn. Cool, so I think this asset is probably done for the sake of this tutorial. So after we've done that, you're going to want to head up to File, Export Textures, select the output, PBR Metallic Roughness, it's going to leave the file type as PNG, etc, etc, and hit Export. I will be making a further tutorial which goes into this a lot more in depth if you want to know how to go from Substance Painter to V-Ray. I already have videos on how to go from Substance Painter to Arnold or Redshift if you want to check those ones out. Not too much to this, obviously there's a lot more power in this software, but making folders of textures and layers and then using masks and generators to affect where those things appear on your asset is the bulk of what you need to know to start achieving your own results. I'd love to see your versions and results from these tutorials, so please go ahead and post them over on the Discord server. With that, thanks for watching, I hope you found this tutorial helpful, if you did hit the like and subscribe buttons, come chat with me on the Discord and I'll see you in the next video.